what happened? I mean, it's uh, God. <laughs> you got connected with the Navy, a dolphin experiment, experiments, and then you wildly come, which we'll get into, wildly come up with a uh, a discovery in the in the essential fat world, essentially, that was recently discovered. It's such a wild. So, so how did how did it? Take yeah. us through that. How did that happen? I mean, it's a, uh, gosh, it was all an accident, you know, it's, yeah. which is amazing. Divine accident. Yeah, divine call. accident. Yeah. Exactly. So I'll take those. Yeah, me too. Uh, so I'm, I'm a veterinary epidemiologist, a uh, nerd from birth, uh, mm. pattern, in, super into <laughs> pattern recognition. And so I read uh, Lori Garrett's book, The Coming Plague. Um, mm. way back when, and I was like, oh, I want to do that. I want to chase diseases down in Africa. And in order to do that, I was planning on going to medical school and I was introduced to a veterinarian, a veterinary epidemiologist. And he said, gosh, if you want to understand diseases, really understand diseases, don't just study what they do in one species, humans mm. figure out what they do in a bunch of species, wow. animals. So it, I never thought I was going to become a veterinarian, but I became a veterinary epidemiologist to track diseases. So I was working for CDC and the World Health Organization. Mm. And then about 20 years ago, was unexpectedly invited by the US Navy to help lead a clinical research program to continually improve the health of Navy dolphins. So, wow. You know, unexpected uh, surprise and it was beautiful San Diego and who wouldn't say yes to that. Uh, and so I uh, went on there and learned uh, first that the Navy takes incredibly good care of their dolphins that mm. live in the open bay in San Diego, go out every day, every day they choose to come back. It's really an amazing program. So wait a minute. So they have, and is this generational at this point? Generational. It's been, the program's been around for over 60 years. Wow. They're on their fourth generation of dolphins. So that that's kind of blowing my mind <laughs> because if I really sit and think about that, yeah. this is a a chosen this is a choice by the dolphins yeah that they have an interaction with the navy they're coming to the bay yeah. but then they have free reign to go out but then they always come back and they choose to come back that's right it's amazing and they wow. they discovered this about dolphins way back in the 1960s um when they had um aquanauts so there used to be you know, Navy substations underwater and they needed to deliver supplies to the aquanauts, but to go up and down with the supplies frequently was really hard for humans. And they had one dolphin named Tuffy um, at the Navy and they found that Tuffy would readily deliver these things. And anyway, the Navy ended up having saying, wow, they're wa working cooperatively with us. It's This is their home. And so 60 years and, you know, by the time 60 years had passed and they've wow. been monitoring their health so closely, that they were ready to bring on an epidemiologist to say, we want to understand diseases over the whole dolphin's lives. Right. And so we were able to really understand, and the dolphins were getting older. So right. as, um, because the Navy takes such good care of their dolphins that they live a lot longer than in the wild. So in the wild, dolphins live to about 20. At the Navy, they live 50, 40 to 50 years old. 40 to yeah. 50 years. And when we were seeing this, we then were seeing that some of the dolphins, but not all of the aging ones, were developing diseases like chronic inflammation, high cholesterol, fatty liver disease, Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were looking a whole lot like healthy humans. So we were able to do uh, this advanced metabolomics study to try to figure out which small molecules, we're looking at thousands of them, which small molecules in the dolphin's blood and their all fish diet predicted the healthiest aging dolphins. And we were expecting it to be omega-3s, to be mm -hmm. honest. And uh, surprisingly, C15, this odd chain saturated fat, was the top predictor of the healthiest aging dolphins. So so, so you're literally looking at, because epidemiology, for those of you, it, it's, it's long span, right? Mm -hmm. So it's looking at the lifetime, looking at, I mean, there's a zillion factors, right? That's right. So, so the, you're looking at lifestyle, you're looking at all of these things. And of course, the, the low-hanging fruit is the ones in the wild die earlier. Probably just it's, gnarl, it's gnarlier. And it's a tough world out there. It's a tough world, yeah. Mm -hmm. And 
so they have a control where they can come and rest and, and come into the bay and stuff, but at the same time still go out. And so then you're looking at all of these biomarkers. And so when you say that C15, it was the, it was the highest significant compound that you saw in the, in the aging, like how did you determine and how, and, and, and number, and number two, how did you determine it? And how did you determine something that you didn't know you were, that even <laughs> right. was there? Right. It's a great question. So we started first by looking at a fatty acid panel. So yeah. the fatty acid panel includes about I mean, 30 to 40 different fatty acids. And so we were, we weren't biased. So we didn't say just look for mm -hmm. omega threes, but we we're like, let's just do the whole panel. It's mm -hmm. the same cost to be honest is why we did it. Right. And uh, when they ran, so when we did that first kind of small study, we were able to show that, you know, these odd chain fatty acids, C15 and C17, were the best predictors of the healthy dolphins. And we said, hmm. So we went looking. And the way we're doing that is, is through, is called a, a logistic regression analysis. So you're basically, like you're saying, Darren, you're able to control for a lot of different factors. And you're able to get down very quickly to the ones that are important. And for the dolphins, it was even easier than humans because they're so clean. Mm -hmm. They don't have, you know, if you asked anyone, any of us, like, what did we eat in the last seven days? Actually, you might know, but <laughs> most people wouldn't be able to list like the diversity of things that they've eaten. Right. So right. dolphins just eat fish. So it's right. very clean. They're not on medications, right? right. There's just a very clean slate to be able to analyze their health data mm -hmm. and get to an answer remarkably quickly. Wow. Yeah. So and, and I'm just curious because because <laughs> of the the what you brought up in terms of people not knowing what they ate and they also don't know what the hell's in the food if they're eating yeah. ultra processed food. So when you were looking at the dolphins, just out of curiosity, did you see any contaminants that were contributing to aging or the inflammation or the Alzheimer's? Did you see heavy metal accumulations? Did you see what were that? What, what did that look like? We didn't see that in the Navy's dolphins. You didn't. However, wow. that has been very clear and repeated in wild dolphins, mm. uh, especially the ones that live in the waters off of some of these areas that have long been kind of dumping grounds uh, for factories um, into mm. their local waters. Unfortunately, dolphins don't move from their home. So even if like during the Deepwater Horizon oil spill, and we were heavily involved in that, mm. um, we just expected, well, the dolphins will just leave. <laughs> when the oil came in, they didn't. They stayed in the same environment and it's had generational effects for them. So we do, in the wild wow. studies, we are seeing definitely effects of uh, contaminants um, that they're getting from the fish. Not only are they living in these contaminated bays, but the fish that they're eating are contaminated as well. Right. And that's